This is Mike Troll with number one, synthetic.com. There it is. Uh, where you can get any and all Amsoil products. So here I'm just beginning to dry fit uh, some of my fittings together. This large hexagonal uh, fitting is the one I got on Amazon. It's a 1 8 uh, BSPT on this end. It's the same uh, female on this end and you can see I've screwed my oil sending unit into that and then this outlet is 1 8 NPT. That's the standard pipe thread fitting, uh, the type of fittings that come in the AMSOIL bypass uh, kit. So I'm just basically dry fitting them together. Uh, obviously I'm going to have to leave this off in order to screw this into the engine. There's not clearance for all this stuff to spin around um, with that. So I'm going to take this back off. I'm going to try dry threading this part into the engine just to make sure everything's good and then we will you know, apply some thread sealer to the threads. Uh, you, you're not supposed to put it on the first one to two threads so you leave those bare and you go back from there with the thread sealer. Hey guys, so another thing I wanted to talk about before I attempt to thread in the fitting with the new oil sending unit uh, that I've already attached with thread locker I want to talk about, um, you notice this is not bottomed out and I think possibly that's what happened with the previous uh, person, you know, they probably tried to keep tightening it because they maybe assumed that, hey, the threads are supposed to bottom out. But pipe threads uh, generally don't. This is definitely tapered. 1 8th BSPT is definitely a tapered thread. I mean, you can see it there that that uh, starts narrow and gets wider. Um, this opening here is 1 8th NPT and that's also a tapered thread so they don't bottom out um, and so when you're tightening these fittings there's a th procedure called snug and grunt and I think it's more for like installing bigger pipes in homes and things but you know it applies here too I mean you you just have to feel it you just have to snug it and give it one more little arc and uh, you know, it comes with experience, and uh, but just know that your fittings aren't going to bottom out. Um, and the thread sealant is what actually does the sealing. So we're going to apply some of that. Actually, I'm going to test dry fit this uh, by God's grace. Uh, we'll see what we can do with this after uh, his favor with the tap. So what I'm doing is threading this in a little more each time and uh, guys I am not an expert on this stuff but I did read online about these uh, types of fittings and they call you put it in and you back it out you put it in a little more and you back it out and I think they call that burnishing the threads um, so I'm just really taking my time and then I occasionally will run the tap through it again, clean the uh, threads with this and, uh, and do that. The tap has reached a positive stop. Like it's, I can just feel that if I turn that tap anymore, if I try to force it, that it's not going to be good. But uh, this, I get it in a few turns and then there's also the issue of clocking. I have to get this gauge, you know, you know, if this was 12 o'clock or whatever you want to say, and this is 9 o'clock, you got to figure out where this opening is going to end up um, so that you can have the threads tight, um, but this in the right place. So, uh, anyway, I just keep playing with that, and I'm going to try putting it in. And again, I'm going to hook up some of these fittings just loosely. And, uh, you know, bump the starter, try to pump uh, some oil through, and uh, get out any foreign material, hopefully.
right, so we're using Loctite 545. This is what came in the AMSOIL kit. And uh, there's two tubes of this in the, in the kit that I'm using. And so you, you want to apply it. Uh, you don't want to get it on the first couple threads. And uh, I hope I'm not putting this on too heavily. But I don't even know why I'm putting it way up here because it's not even threading that far in. But um, I did get it to thread in a little bit more. Uh, kept doing it just a hair farther. And I, I can't really get a socket and a ratchet up on this thing. It's so tall now. I mean, I probably could, but I thought I can't really feel what I'm doing. So I did use an adjustable wrench and uh, um, just like, you know, not using the length of the wrench, but using my, uh, what am I saying? Using, you know, maybe one to two inches of the length of the wrench, just putting my thumb kind of uh, up there and, and trying to turn it, you know, as gently as possible and feeling that, okay, it's still turning, it's still, you know, I back it out and still don't see any, you know, evidence of threads stripping, so I basically got it almost to where I want it, and so I took it out and now I'm coating these threads and we're gonna see we're gonna see what we can do here. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Looks like I did get it in. There's some purple thread locker on there. And I think I did get it clocked to the position that I wanted. Um, you know... I think I'm going to stop right there. I don't think I'm going to try to turn it anymore. And uh, what I'm going to do is connect some hoses and then um, hopefully disconnect the fuel pump relay and have a helper turn the key. And we'll see if we can pump out uh, any uh, contaminants. So guys, we're in the Honda Pilot and you can see um, number one, 15 amp fuel pump. We're right down here by the pedals. And this is the parking brake. And you can see it uh, right there. So we come up here, and I've already pulled it. The top, the very top, the one above 10. Uh, it's this one here. So I pulled that. So I'll show you my setup guys here's my setup so we last left off there's the fitting the shiny metal fitting with the new oil sending unit now these other couple of fittings those are just kind of hodgepodge together they're not even tight um, they're just connected uh, very loosely to this hose which is going into this water bottle and I'm gonna have my wife turn the uh, engine over it may start, because I have not bled the fuel pressure, but, I mean, I'm kind of hoping it doesn't start. Um, but if it does, it'll only be a probably a little stumble. So, and I did screw in that VTEC uh, oil sensor, because I'm not sure if oil would come out of that or not. I don't know if that gets oil only during uh, VTEC engagement or what the deal is. So, so here we go. All right, guys, we're gonna do this like Beyblade. Three, two, one, let her rip.
Okay, you can stop. Man, I didn't get anything yet. Huh. That's a little... Yeah, maybe it's just leaked down, I guess. Um, I guess we'll try again. Okay, guys, I apologize. I actually had to crank the engine a lot more than I thought I would in order to get oil to come out. Um, yeah, it started to make me wonder after a while, but um, yeah, I, I don't want to burn up the starter, so I was doing like five, ten seconds at the most, you know, burst, letting it cool like five minutes. Kind of scratching my head there for a minute, but um, you know, it just took a lot, uh, a lot longer to bring some oil out than I realized. So, um, but yeah, so here we got some oil. You can see. Um, hopefully, that's sufficient to flush everything out. Um, what I'm going to do is take it and kind of pour it through a coffee filter or something, and and just look and see what may have come out. Alright guys, we're going to pour this stuff through a paper towel. My coffee filters are brown, so I figured maybe that wouldn't work as well. Basically, I just want to see if there's any chips in here. I don't know what's better, to, to see chips and know that they got pumped out or to not see any and hopefully uh, there were none down in the engine. Alright, well, I don't actually see any chips. That doesn't mean there's not some there that the naked eye can't make out, but um, I even looked at the bottom of the bottle and didn't what I thought were chips in the bottom of the bottle turned out to be uh, stuff on the outside of the bottle from the garage floor. They just brushed right off. So, um, naked eye, I can't see anything. That right, ah, what is that right there? I think that was a bubble. I think it was literally an air bubble. Because now it's gone. So finally, guys, here's what we wanted to see a long time ago was the fitting with the new oil sensor installed in the top, thread locker at both ends, and you can see how this fitting doesn't go down uh, a whole lot. Um, and that's just the nature of these type of threads. You, you can't expect them to run in all the way and uh, you know just be careful not to over tighten and so now it's time to um, you know begin hooking up our supply hoses and that is a right there that's a 1 8 NPT and so I'm going to use a 90 and the um, the other fitting which is a I think it's a 7 16th JIC and that's going to connect to the pressure hose. So I'll show you that. Alright, so I'm going to apply some thread locker to this 90. And I can't do this one into here at the same time because I don't think I would have enough clearance, uh, swing clearance, uh, uh, installing it into the engine. So, ooh, there we go. Yeah, remember, none on the first one to two threads. All right, so now we're just taking our, our fitting with the thread locker, if you can zoom on that. And I'm just gonna, sorry, I don't know how much you can see here.
There we go. Had to find the find the threads. And then I'm gonna clock that uh, probably just one full turn around um, to the about the same position it's in right now. So I'll use a wrench for that. All right, got the thread sealer on the first one to two threads. And then this side, I don't think gets any thread sealer. This is almost like a hydraulic type fitting. And uh, we'll go over that in a little bit. But this is just a 1 8 NPT. It's going to screw into my um, elbow that I got clocked where I want it. And you don't even need to use the elbow, but I thought it was better for my hose routing. So... That felt pretty nice going in. Sorry, didn't have the camera. It's hard to watch what you're doing and watch what you're filming at the same time. So I will just start uh, cranking that in a little bit. Um, directions say two to three turns beyond finger tight, but I just, you know, again, use judgment, don't over tighten, and, uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so what we have to do now is assemble our hose and fitting. And this is the fitting that is going to this angled, I think it's 37 degree JIC. That's going to fit on there. And make the transition uh, that way. But now to assemble the hose fitting, this comes apart and we're going to screw this onto the hose counterclockwise. So. so we're turning it, we're turning it. When it bottoms out, we're going to back it, back it off. Sorry, I hope I'm in the frame here. Oh, I guess it, I guess it did bottom out. Okay, cool. And then you back it off half of a turn. So, we're going to go... There it is. Okay, we backed it off half a turn. You might not be able to see a lot in there, but um, so now what we want to do, you take the nipple and you oil it. You can also oil the inside of the hose, it says, and it, it says oil liberally. So uh, what we're going to use is the oil that we're going to be uh, using what's in there now is the Amsoil Signature Series 5W20. The Honda calls for 520, but um, we're going to go ahead and switch it and uh, use the 0W20 at the next oil change, which I'm just going to move up to now. It's not due for another uh, month or two, but we're going to go ahead and just change it all out once we do this. So yeah, this Amsoil Signature Series, it's a 100% synthetic, you know, it's a chemically engineered synthetic. So this is unlike most of what you're going to find in the stores. Um, not saying it's the only one, but beware, beware what you're buying out there as far as uh, full synthetic doesn't always equal 100% uh, synthetic. So, I'll be careful. I don't want to drop this in the bottle. Normally, I would never uh, uh, stick something into a bottle like this, you know, thinking about contamination. But we're going to be using it soon enough uh, when we do pre fill the bypass filter and everything. So, 
it says you can oil the inside of the hose, so I'm just going to drip some of this in. But There we get a little that way. Okay. So basically now we just screw it in. Started here. Make sure it's starting properly. Getting all oily. And we'll use a wrench here because it's. I just want to make sure it's going together right. And. Take two wrenches. Um, probably sh should do this in a vise. Would be would make it a little easier, but uh, but this works as well. So we're just gonna tighten this in until it shoulders against the socket. So this is the action area here. All right, so we've almost got this one tightened down. It says till it shoulders against the socket. So um, just gonna bring it all the way down. Vice probably make this easier, but this works. Okay, that's it. And we have a pressure pressure rated hose assembled and our JIC connector on this end and this will screw on to the uh, fittings that we just put on the uh, where it comes out of the oil sending unit adapter and then we'll come up and, and figure out how much hose we need and cut it and all that. So I haven't cut anything to length yet. I'm just feeding the hose down into the engine compartment and I'm probably going to route it uh, right along this power steering hose here and have it follow, maybe probably zip tie it to that. Um, but anyways, we'll go down and, and attach that. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the oil sending unit uh, plug thingy here. That's a technical term, by the way. I don't know how much you can actually see. Should just snap on. There, there it is. I think that's all there is to it. Um, it just came off with a kind of prying it off with a screwdriver. So I'm going to attempt to put this boot down over it. Alright, so see there's the hose and the fitting and um, I'll show you uh, on the top side of the car when we attach these exactly how to do this but basically you finger tighten it and then you just tighten it with two wrenches uh, one on each fitting you do a two flats um, so if there's six flats on a bolt on the side of a bolt you do uh, it's basically a third of a turn but um, 
actually maybe did a little bit less because it just felt tight and I read online and it's like yeah don't over tighten them so um, but we'll do some more up top uh, so you can get a better view of what I was doing down here there's just not much space to work but uh, that's what we got so far and I'm gonna route that and uh, do some zip ties and uh, start putting things back together down here hopefully All right guys, so here's the oil cap. Uh, taking that off the engine and um, looking at that for uh, where I'm gonna drill through. See if you can see, there's that little dimple there. So I think rather than try to drill through here, I'll probably go this direction since there's already a, a dimple. Um, and I already looked down in the engine, there shouldn't be any interference um, with the valve train um, now this is made to be actually cut off the instructions say to um, cut the length off of this after you're done and so we might do that um, but then that's another step and I gotta you know clean that up to make sure there's no chips so I'm just gonna see how it is I think it'll be fine sticking down in there um, as long as there's no interference I might just leave it so I'm gonna go ahead and drill this. So we got the oil fill cap in the vise, and a, um, we're drilling a 3 8 hole. This is actually a 5 16 and I figure I can always go bigger. So we're gonna start with this and then try the fitting at that point. So I'm just going into this dimple. Obviously your vehicle might be a different setup. We got some oil resistant RTV here and we've got our cap that we drilled and this swivel fitting for the return oil and down in here around the fitting but we don't want to get any uh, no need to get any down in the in the uh, the part that's actually down in there this is just a seal around here alright guys here's my oil fill cap all cleaned up and this is my installation of the fitting uh, what you see down in there is a the washer and it already had a black like rubber coating around the uh, center part of it so some of that is that and some of that might be just a little bit of um, the RTV I've been spending a lot of time cleaning this up with uh, paper towels and q-tips and so but yeah I think it came out pretty good um, so yeah so that's what's going to return the oil to the engine. Again, the directions say to cut this off, but I don't think there's going to be any interference with the valve train or anything, so I'm probably going to leave it alone. So we can go ahead and install. Um, I'm probably going to use a 90 degree fitting in here. Okay, so here's my finished product, my oil fill cap. Um, the RTV is going to continue to set up and dry over time. Um, it says 24 hours before you put it in service, but this isn't like it's going to, you know, it's not like an oil pan gasket where it's going to have a constant, you know, oil against it. This is just going to be, you know, oil coming out of here. Um, so by the time I'm done, it probably will be long enough. But I put my angle fitting in, I put my JIC fitting in, and this will be ready to connect to the hose with the clean oil coming from the bypass filter and the nice thing um, this is a swivel fitting so you know the hose is going to 
um, you're going to be able to turn your oil cap um, with the hose. So that's the whole idea. All right, guys, so now things are starting to come together. Um, there are various fittings in the kit, like this T fitting, um, angle fittings, and of course straight fittings, and this NPT fitting with the uh, JIC fitting that the hose will connect to. Um, you just have to think about how you're mounting it and the angles that you want the hoses to intersect. Um, so these uh, outlets, it is marked in and out. Um, if you know about oil filters, you know that the clean oil comes out of the center. The dirty oil goes in the outside of the filter, but they are marked. So where we're going to come in, we're probably going to need, we're probably going to use one of these, put this protective cover back on, and then we're going to need, um, it's optional, but you know, you can purchase this through AMSOIL as well. It's just a, uh, a little oil sampling valve. and. Um, since I do plan to occasionally monitor things by oil analysis, um, you know, this allows you to, with the engine running, open this and fill your sample bottle. And uh, it's a clean, easy way to do that. Um, and then for the output, I think... No, I probably will still need a, um, an angle fitting on that. So, so probably something like this. And... Uh, you know, to return the engine to the oil fill cap sealant. Um, so you just got to play with these and figure out how you want them to intersect and uh, what angles you want. And then you can begin to, um, you know, put your thread locker on. And uh, that's what we'll do. There it is. It just hadn't come down yet. Did get it a little lower than I wanted to. I'll try to clear out maybe the first thread. There we go. I'll kind of distribute around in there, I'm sure. So this is the inlet port. This comes directly from the uh, oil sending unit. All the stuff that we did down below on the vehicle. And so thinking about how I want this to intersect it's going to be on the vehicle at a slight angle and the hose is going to be so yeah I need to bring it on around and I have already put these in dry and run them in and, and turn them a little bit so so this is like my final uh, little you know, putting them in and get them clocked where I want them. So I'm going to leave that there for now. I may turn it just a little bit more, but I'm going to see where that ends up um, intersecting. <laughs> then our sample valve will go here. And I mean, you could put it here, but um, I'm thinking take a sample before the oil goes through the filter. You know, you want to get, you want to see what the stuff is in the actual uh, engine oil before it comes out clean out of the filter. <laughs> Remember the thread sealer on these type of threads is what actually does the threads. Um, from what I understand, you know, you can tighten these up dry and there's a possibility uh, they might not seal because the sealing is uh, accomplished by the thread sealer. Now I have heard other things that say the threads kind of, you know, come together if you do it right and you don't need to. I, so I, I'm using the sealer and... this will be our outlet and I'm going to have this angle alright so hose coming up from the engine 
here's my hodgepodge installation like I showed you with my um, I had this kit bolted on to another vehicle onto the plastic air box and then actually never got to connect the hoses it got uh, totaled vehicle got totaled so anyway here it is I would recommend you know most of you um, you're you can either fabricate something yourself or or go to a fab shop and get them to make something for you but it's just tough you know with clearance and everything so this is barely I mean there's clearance all around it just barely and I've put um, some of this foam stuff to kind of I don't want it banging against this metal and we'll see how it works but I'm gonna tighten these down I've got some uh, some bolts that will kind of hold this in um, and then so just looking at my hose length um, I think I want to cut maybe somewhere around here because I do want to leave enough um, there's going to be a fitting here you know so I do want to leave enough slack to lift this up out of here to change the filter um, now if I have to I can disconnect the hoses at the JIC fittings but it's going to enter here uh, sample valve here and this is the outlet 90 degrees and it's going to come up up and over and over to our oil fill cap so you know this is going to be uh, custom something you have to figure out as far as your angles and your hoses and definitely want to route everything properly and cover the hose in protective um, I've got some of this uh, I don't see it, this type of stuff if you got some of this that can help um, you know to guard the hose so all right so to assemble these fittings um, this is your pressure hose fitting and this is your 37 degree JIC fitting so there's four of them in this case and so it's pretty simple you just unscrew this and so it's just to oil liberally with oil and you know the inside of the hose as well so we're just going to take our what we're going to be using in here the Amsoil 020 signature series and we're going to oil this and I'm even going to hold my finger over it try to suck a little bit out so to speak and get some in the hose there we go. Yep, we got some in there. And there's no uh, gasket sealer on these threads. So it's just it's just this oil. Um, it's like a pressure fitting. You'll see how it goes together. Oop, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So I should have done this first, but anyway. This goes on the outside of the hose. There's some, I guess, reverse threads. You do this counter, counterclockwise. Should do another take. I probably have to cut it, but you just go <coughs> reverse threads, and this is just going onto the outside of the hose. It's just this collar need a wrench here in a second you can also do this in a vise um, once you get this part on just run it down all the way and then you back it off half a turn so be good and then so that's just you know held onto the outside of the hose then you take your um, this part that was lubricated and you just put it in and start threading it in there let me make sure I'm getting it right this is what's gonna make the pressure seal So, 
this is a 9 16 I'm just using an adjustable on this bigger one I'm not sure exactly what it is but maybe 5 8 or something but yeah you can also put that collar in a in your vise if you want and you turn this part in until it until it's all the way kind of intimidating at first because you're like how is this going to hold pressure but it's the design of the fitting and the, the good quality hose it just a good design. And, uh, I'm going to bring it in all the way. Make sure that we get it tight here. Might be it. Yep, it's good. So you do that. Um, we've already got the one on the engine, and then we'll need. You know, there's going to be three more of these, but that's uh, that's all you do, and then that screws on your JIC fittings, like right here onto the on your uh, things like this. And then you tighten those just a third of a turn with a wrench once they bottom out by hand. Um, two flats, so you know it's a six-sided bolt, so a flat. There's six of them, so you you draw a mark with a pen or or marker or something, and you just turn two flats. You don't want to over tighten it. All right. All right. So we're gonna drain drain our oil here because we're going to start clean. Um, yeah, I'll check ends on my garage later, but this is, uh, we're probably doing this about a month early. Um, but yeah, you know, I want to start clean rather than, you know, start this filter. With dirty dirty oil you know but you could you could conceivably just add the bypass this pans in my way I'll just have to move the bring the drain pan back I got my 17 millimeter bolt and I wish I had gone ahead and ordered a gold plug, magnetic drain plug, but, you know, and get around to it, but at least, at least, you know, with the bypass filter, I mean, that's going to catch stuff, but a, a magnetic drain plug is nice because it can catch stuff, you know, before it has to go through the oil pump, so there's something to be said for that. go ahead and go ahead and drain it all right we're gonna let that drain uh, as long as we can, you know, while I'm finishing up this bypass install. Alright, so now we're just going to change our oil filter. Or take it off so it can drain. Maybe I need a wrench. Huh. Interesting. There it is. Just needed to get a grip. Uh, 
I gotta get some gloves. I keep saying that. Anyway, so we'll get that off of there. Let this drain so we can have all new oil, new filter, and the new bypass filter will be set up for good clean oil and drastically reduced <coughs> engine wear. We'll just let this drain for a while while we're doing the rest of the work on the bypass filter. Thank you. Alright, so Jesse's got our AMSOIL EA15K13. This is the full flow AMSOIL oil filter that we just took off the engine. And so there's that. And then we're going to peel the plastic. I'll help you, buddy. And we're going to get this. This is a nanofiber media and it's good for 15,000 miles or one year of severe it? service. Yeah, we're going to pre-fill it. So do you pour it all? No, no, no. We're just going to pour a little. We're just going to pre-fill it some and that helps the engine to not have a dry start after an oil change. Now it's got that silicone anti-drain back valve down in there that prevents dry starts after that. And there's also, if you were wondering, there's also an anti-drain back valve in the bypass filter. So don't let people talk about, um, oh, you're going to have a dry start every time with all those extra hoses and fittings. Why does it have to get that big? So now, Jesse, do you want to, do you have clean fingers, kind of? No dust on them. Here, I'll put a little extra so we can... So get some of this oil just on one of your fingers and put around this gasket. You want me to help you? Or... There you go. Now put it on this black rubber piece right here. There you go, see? All right, get a little more. Okay. Yep, you want me to rotate it? All right, put a little more on there. This is so the filter doesn't stick to the engine. So it'll come off when we want to change it next year. Down in there, Jesse, you got to get down on the ground. Now I'm going to help you get it started so the threads are on there. Oops. Watch your head. So So here we go. We're going to get it get it started onto the threads. Okay, now it's started. You want to tighten it on there? Which? Well, the same way I was turning it, so it's clockwise, you know, but it's upside down, so, yep, that way. Let's go ahead and turn it all the way. It looks cool in the Yeah, it does look cool. Very good. Yeah, you get it nice and tight by hand, and I'll give it a good tightening by hand. Wow, look at this guy. Super strong. Excellent work, Jesse. Man, you're all set to... Is that good? That's good. I'm gonna double check it. But Whoa, that's pretty tight, buddy. Oh, man. You did a great job. <laughs> Alright, give me a high five. Change the oil filter. Blowing away. All right, so here's our mount. We're getting getting ready here. I just wanted to point out that inside the bypass filter, there's a restrictor, so the oil comes in. Whoops! Drop my bolt. You can see right up through there, the oil comes in um, through this one, and then the oil uh, goes through the filter, through the bypass filter. It looks like a regular spin-on. It's even got the orange anti-drain back valve, which is going to, you know, prevent dry starts and all that stuff. Because um, some people will talk about that. Um, you're going to get a little bit of delay 
building your oil pressure the very first time and after you change a filter, but um, that's it, and that's why we pre-fill. But so you see this flow restrictor, that's important because, yeah, you wouldn't want all your oil pressure uh, bleeding off. And besides, you want it going through the bypass filter very, very slowly. So, I mean, that's it. That's a tiny hole. And then it comes out the center, and it's going to go back to our oil fill cap. So, at this point, um, we had Jesse pre fill the full flow. We're going to have Gabe pre fill. Gabe, you want to pre fill the filter? Let me come on this side of you so we can see. So, if you want to take that, and we're still working on the first court, so good job. We got that other bottle there if we need it. To crack it loose. Sorry, am I getting in your way? Mm -mm. All that Amswell 100% synthetic goodness. Oh, these bypass filters, I always forget to say this. Not only do they filter to 2 microns, absolute, they also remove water. I don't know how much, but uh, water, you know, if you don't drive your car a long distance every day, um, you can have water from condensation from the heat and cool cycles of your engine. Um can build up in your oil and so these bypass elements actually do remove water I don't know how much but you know it is good nevertheless to get your car out and get it up to temperature can every I... so often that's you... good and then it do you have clean fingers because you want to go ahead and we want to go ahead and do the gasket buddy here, I'd rather we don't reach down in the hole because that's um, that that's the clean side where it goes directly to the engine bearings. You want me to do a little more, or are you? Okay. So I'm just gonna do that, and we'll get a little to come out up here, and then you can get some of that. So yeah, if you got clean fingers, no dust, go ahead and get some of that oil and oil the gasket just like Jesse did with the full flow. I think my flash went off, so hopefully we got enough light here. Go ahead, don't be afraid of it. Get it get it wet with the oil. Alright, very good. And then I'll get you something to wipe your hands. We did go ahead and record our date of service, February 24th, 2020, and our mileage, 148. 412 and that's also going to go into the Amsoil my garage um, and that's where I keep all my records and you can do that too just go to my website number one synthetic dot com all right so with our filter all pre-filled now we're going to take our, our uh, we're going to re reassemble it. The gasket's all oiled. So we're just spinning it on. Hope I got it in the frame. Now after you get it uh, on there you do it another turn so, not sure if we'll need a um, a wrench. I might might use a strap wrench because this is a big filter, um, but probably not. Probably just end up doing it by hand. All right, guys. So my website is number one synthetic .com. Michael Troll, Amsoil dealer. If you like what I'm doing here, uh, please support me. Go to my website. Uh, sign up as a preferred customer, get all your Amsoil at wholesale price, free shipping over $100. Oh, and you can also, you can sign up for the Amsoil My Garage for free. You don't have to buy anything. You can uh, put in your email and a password, and 
you can store all your vehicle's information. So, so I went into Amsoil My Garage and I could see that our Honda um, was done, uh, the oil change was done right after we bought it in uh, April of last year and it's got about 8,500 miles on the oil so today's February of 2020 and so we didn't quite uh, get to our year but like I said I want to go ahead and change the oil uh, while putting this bypass on I wasn't gonna you know put this brand new bypass filter on with you know oil that's just about ready to be changed so um, we'll go ahead and record all that in the my garage feature at number one synthetic.com all right guys so now I'm just taking some of this um, plastic protective conduit I bought this a while ago on Amazon I'm just gonna start feeding some of it uh, over the hose down to the uh, where it connects and then I'll you know trim it and uh, hopefully it'll just provide a little extra protection All right, we're back underneath the car Let's take a look here. There's our fitting in the engine with the fitting and the pressure hose. And then you'll see right above that some protective conduit that I've sent down. I'll leave it kind of where it is till I check for leaks. And then I'll probably bring it down. And we reinstalled our VTEC oil sensor and plugged that back in and moved our there was a plug in there I had to move so that I could get this wire here out of the way so I put that back um, so yeah hopefully everything's good and then there's our brand new oil filter that Jesse helped install and uh, excellent excellent full flow filter and uh, the reason this filter can't be uh, super fine like the bypass is you know this filter has to flow a uh, hundred percent of the oil that gets pumped it's got to go through this in a hurry you know so that it doesn't starve the engine of oil but the bypass filter can be much finer and take much slower because it's only taking a small amount of the oil at a time oh one other thing I did replace the drain plug <laughs> Don't want to forget that. Got a brand new crush washer on there. So. All right, so Gabe and Jesse have been big helpers. And what we're going to do now is work on uh, tightening up this hose. Up this so, if you want to come in and. So, the way you, the way you do these is these fittings only get turned a third of a turn or two flats so we're gonna take the marker let's see I'm trying to think because which way it's gonna go let's connect it by hand run it on by hand Well, we're going to go, we're going to put the marker there, and then, so we want to bring this flat around to be in line with this one. Alright, so with our two wrenches, we're going to turn it two flats. Let's see where we're at. That's almost one, but I'm also not going to over tighten it. Um, bless you. So I'm also not going to over tighten it. I'm going to stop when it feels tight because a lot of things on the internet say um, that you can over tighten these things and then they then they will leak. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go, that's 
that's not too flat as you can see it's you know see two flats would have been to bring these marks up in line but it feels good to me I, I feel like I would over tighten it if I kept going so I think we're gonna stop there Is it almost done? yeah it's getting there buddy almost uh, done there's my two dealers and Oscar in the background that's a uh, kids. <laughs> All right, so you can kind of see from behind the engine where I routed the hose. It's got the protective conduit, and um, I may, I'll see if I need to use some zip ties or anything. And then here, I put a protective piece of old hose here because this is kind of, I mean, there's sort of clearance, but with this, it's kind of touching and I didn't want there to be any chance of it rubbing and that's for right now that's my installation I mean I may you know it's kind of out of the way of the fan and everything so I might put some protective conduit on it at some point but uh, for now so I think I think it's time to fill this thing up and pray for no leaks. All right, the time has come. Drain plugs in, full flow filters on, bypass filters on and connected. So it's time to add, we're gonna unscrew our oil cup, oil cap with our nice swivel fitting. See how that works? It allows you to turn the oil fill cap and then bring it up out of there and find a place to hang that while we're working. So we're going to put our clean funnel in. Funnels always make me nervous because it's so hard to get them clean. And even though I have all this filtration, you know, oil has to go through the oil pump first and the oil pump is also subject to wear. Alright, let's get it in there. And I'll use the stool. Babe, just don't <coughs> disturb what we're doing while we're pouring. Very good. Alright, lift it up a little. Quart number one going in. Keep number one going in. Time on my own. Alright, you can go ahead and just dump it in there, I guess. Alright, we got Gabe here with his quart. You need a hand? Turn it left. Mm. Counterclockwise, other way. Okay. The AMS will 100% chemically engineered synthetic. Mm. Uh, hold on to it. You need a hand or you got it? I got it. Okay. Be careful. Make sure you get it in there. And then you can, no, no. once you're able to, you can tip it up and just dump it. But. Yeah, group four, polyalpha, olefin, group five, ester. Gabe, just dump it in there. And we're, this is a true synthetic, a true chemical-based synthetic. And Amsoil's been out since the early 70s, and it's up to 25,000 miles or one year. And um, severe service even is 15,000 or one year. And so most people are severe service. And um, with this bypass filter, what you can do is actually run the oil even longer if you monitor it by oil analysis. And that reminds me of this if you order a bypass kit I think they still do this I would assume they do um, you return this card for one free oil analysis kit and so um, you're able to put everything um, you know all your information 
and uh, they analyze it for you. But normally it's like 30 bucks, something like that. And uh, so this gets you one free. So probably in a year, we'll pull a sample out of our handy valve here, which I wasn't able to clock into the position I wanted. It was actually, um, the threads got really tight and I didn't want to strip them. So I just stopped right there. What I'll probably do is just get a piece of tubing that will fit over that and fill my bottle, sample bottle that way. All right, so back under the car, we're going to reinstall in that top hole our 15 amp fuse. And that is going to uh, allow our fuel pump to run so we can start up. So Gabe's going to check for leaks as I start up. We'll say a quick prayer. Lord, be gracious to us. Uh, we need your grace and favor in this situation, uh, praying especially for no leaks on the back of the engine where the threads were all messed up. Alright, let's... Let's see. So we're going to look for... I'm going to actually cycle the fuel pump again since I was cranking with the engine with the fuel pump disconnected. Alright, so there's our oil light. Oh, oil light's out already. No leaks. Alright. You can come out, Gabe. Let me get down there. All right. I got a light on my camera. Um, Gabe, I can't see. Wow. Okay, well, there's the... Let me get in a little closer. The area... I don't see any leaks. Praise the Lord. All right, let's try unscrewing the cap so we can actually see the oil coming through. How about a filmer? So we're going to unscrew this cap. Are you able to get it? Okay, carefully I'm going to unscrew the cap because um, Alright, so I'm carefully Yep, see that oil coming out of there? I don't know if you can see that. There might be some uh, bubbles here and there from, you know, expelling it from the system, but um, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to try to lift it out. Yeah, see that oil coming? Oop, there's some more air bubbles. But yeah, it's definitely flowing. Wow. Well, there it is. Analytically clean oil. Oop, some more air bubbles. All right. Very exciting. very exciting after all this work. This is my first bypass filter install ever. 
and uh, yeah, I hope it's going to help our engine last a long time, and um, I hope it helps you to see what the uh, what AMSOIL is all about and what these bypass filters are all about. What's going to be really exciting is uh, normally my oil changes go like this. If I don't go over 15,000 miles in a year in severe service, and I don't, um, I change the oil and the full flow filter on the engine once a year because that's AMSOIL's recommendation. But with this filter, with this filter, the oil change intervals can be dramatically extended. So what I'll do is probably right before a year, I'll pull an oil sample, oh, right here, and uh, I'll hook up a tube and run it down to a sample bottle and send that to a lab, and they can tell me if the oil is good, if the TBN, the total base number, which is the reserve alkalinity of the oil, as long as that number is, up, you know, above zero. So the AMS oil that we just put in has a TBN of like 12 or 13. It's extremely high quality and it's got a good additive package um, made for extended life. So as long as that TBN is, you know, I think when it gets down to three or four, it's moderate. And if it gets below two, you want to change it because you never want to let it get to zero because then the acids from combustion will corrode your engine from the inside but um, basically they'll tell us what's going on and if the oil's good after a year we will change the full flow filter which is down below sorry my camera person might not know where that is or what that is but we'll change this one out because this is a 15,000 mile or one year filter. We'll change that out at a year. And like I said, if the uh, oil sample is good, we will just top off the oil and keep running it. And uh, then after a second year, this filter will need to be changed and we'll have to pull it out. We'll have to take all this out and uh, because of the way I've got it mounted in there, that's the only way. But I'm very happy. This sounds really good, really smooth. Um, praise the Lord, no leaks. Let's look at our dash again. And our oil pressure light, I was really impressed. It went out right away. Um, everything looks good. So I'm excited. Pull our dipstick. And I have a feeling we're going to need to add a little bit of oil. Um, should be about four and a half quarts total with the um, regular filter, and with the addition of this filter, um, it's probably going to be a little bit more. And I put in a total of five already, so. Thinking maybe another half a quart or something. I can't see that. I can barely see that. Yeah, it's barely on the stick. So we're going to add... Um, it looks like it needs probably a whole nother quart. Because I think that big bypass filter holds about a quart by itself. And um, So maybe I'll throw in a half and see where we're at. Um, dripping out. I have to figure out what to do with all this stuff. This is all new. Just set it there. Funnel.
Guys, I just pulled the dipstick again, looked at it. Yeah, it's it's definitely um, right on the bottom of the stick, so it's not in the safe zone at all. So I'm going to go ahead and dump this whole cord in, which means this is a, we've already put in five, and this is a total of six. So we've increased our total system capacity by something like a quart and a half. And uh, that, that'll make our oil, uh, oil changes last longer, too, because you got, you know, a lot more volume of oil um, to suspend the contaminants in. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're going to be doing at least two years uh, without changing the oil. And we'll see what the analysis says after a year. Works really nice, that swivel fitting. You can just thread your oil cap right in, even with that uh, fitting and hose on it, it's right back together. Now let's pull a dipstick again. I think we're going to be right on the money this time. Oh, we are definitely in the safe zone. I think we're right at almost at the top of the crosshatch, so we are good. We'll continue to monitor it, as you should anyway. It's always a good idea to check your oil regularly, and, uh, especially when you're you know you put in a high quality synthetic uh, like AMS oil, and you kind of think, well. Ah, I can forget about it. Well, you still need to maintain the level. Um, you don't want to let it run low. Um, so I went to reinstall my upper uh, cover. I did reinstall the lower cover, which I've had off for a long time from doing different things. But the top cover, I'm experiencing some interference here with my uh, installation. But what I'll do, I'll go ahead. It looks like right there is where the um, contact is being made. So rather than take this off, I'll probably notch this or drill that out or something. And uh, you know, try to get this to fit better. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean the installation doesn't look that terrible so there it is and I'll see if I need to zip tie that or put some of that correct that uh, protective covering over that hose but it's actually pretty good um, the fans not gonna hit it everything's everything looks good on a final note guys Use a torque wrench to put your um, lugs back on, or at the very least, do not use an impact, you know. Just do it smart. Don't strip threads. Alright guys, so here's the final, you know, start up everything's back on. Gauge goes out almost instantly. And so, my thoughts, I'm real happy with this. Like I said, this is one of many systems they offer. This is a universal single remote. There's kits that are designed just for certain vehicles, but most vehicles will use a, um, a universal system. And then this is the 90. This is the smallest size filter element. They go up in size from here, so if you have more room, or if you have a really big sump capacity, consider something like that. 
if you have a big truck, they make dual element ones with actually um, really large filters. So, you know, we can service whatever you have and um, greatly extend your engine life, hopefully. And if you have any questions, reach out to me. Hope you can see that. Number one synthetic.com or leave me a comment or get a hold of me. Thanks, guys. All right, we're going to go for a little little test drive. Nothing too crazy right now. Man, I'm so glad to have this thing back on the road after that scare with the um, the oil sending unit threads. But you just never know what you're going to find, uh, obviously with a used car. Um, but let that be a lesson to you guys to not over tighten threads. Just be aware of those pipe threads. A lot of those sensors, you know, might not bottom out. And you just have to go by uh, kind of like feel. Because, yeah, you shouldn't use a torque wrench either on a, on a pipe thread or anything. It just, it's just something you got to feel. But I think we've got success with this. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how my oil consumption does. Because uh, it can go down, actually. When you, when you have analytically clean oil, you know, you generally consume less. So we're going to go down here to auto and light truck. So you can see, you can, you know, look up anything. Um, Amsoil My Garage. So here's where you'd come if you want to enter your year, make, and model. Um, but we're already in the system. So we're just going to go here. I'm already signed in, so so we are right here. So let's let's go over one page. There it is. Let's need to update some things, but <laughs> So, guys, I just set a reminder for this service for basically the 1st of February, a year from now. And um, that's probably when we'll draw our sample. We'll do our oil sample and send that in. But here's this oil and filter change. And... There's our product. So this is a really convenient, like I said, my garage at number one synthetic.com. And you can also go through amsoil.com. But if you like what I'm doing here, if I'm helping you, um, here's my information. If you care to uh, put in my name so I get credit. And uh, my dealer number is 1463115. Thanks, guys.